Welcome to the Picture Language Seminar. It's a very nice day here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we're very happy that we have remotely Anna-Marie Aubert. Anna-Marie is Director of Research at CNRS and at the University of Paris, Jussieu. She's going to tell us about a bridge between the baum kahn conjecture and the Langlands program. And we're very interesting to know about this work. So, Anna-Marie, share your screen and you can begin. Okay, <clears throat> so thank you very much for this uh, very nice invitation. I'm very pleased to uh, have the opportunity to talk at the Mathematical Picture Language Seminar today. Uh, so in my talk, uh, there will be, be uh, two parts. Uh, in the first part, I will uh, explain the decomposition of the category of representation of groups uh, and uh, try to explain to you how this uh, decomposition gives info information on the reduced C-star algebra of a group. And, uh, and then I will move to, uh, I will give more uh, uh, a geometric description also of this uh, uh, decomposition. And, from, and in the in second part of the talk, uh, we will forget about representation and go to the Galois side, and you will see that a um, similar picture occurs. So let's start. Uh, first, uh, sorry, first, uh, the group I will consider a uh, group of points over, over, over some uh, uh, fields. And what are the fields? So we fixed a prime number P and I will consider non-Archimedean local field. Uh, that is a finite extension of a field of uh, periodic integers, QP, which are the integers, the, which has, can be, the, I mean, the element that can be written as uh, some like this. So X is an, uh, an infinite sum uh, on, of AMPM, possibly inf infinite sum of AMPM, but it started with some, uh, it's infinite only on uh, when M is, uh, 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 is growing. And uh, in that, and I consider a finite, so it could be QP or a finite extension of QP. And in that case, the characteristic of my field F is equal to zero. And such a field is usually called a periodic field. Uh, we can also consider field of positive characteristic or equal characteristic, which are the field which are fin uh, finite extension of FP double parenthesis T, uh, where FP is a finite field with P element. So in other words, it's the field of uh, formal Lorentz series FQ double parenthesis T, where Q is a power of P. And in that case, the characteristic of the field is P, which is the same as the characteristic of FP, which is here uh, of a, uh, yes. And um, uh, in all this case, we consider the ring of integers of a field in the, and, the, and our field is a local field. So it has a unique uh, maximal ideal, uh, the, um, sorry, the ring of integers is, is as a unique maximal ideals and that we denote it by PF. So an example in the case of QP itself, so we have a periodic norm, which is defined so as follows. So you take an, an element, uh, a rational number, and you uh, select the, uh, the maximal power of P in it. So you write it as PM A mod B, where A, A and B are not divisible by P. And then the periodic valuation of that number is P at the power minus M. And th this periodic norm is very interesting because it's it's, as the following property, when you can consider the, the periodic norm of a sum, it is uh, not greater than the maximum of both norms. And in the case of QP, the, the ring of integers, it's just the element uh, which has periodic norm not greater than one, and the, the maximal ideal PF is given by the element where the norm is less than one. So these are the, the field we, we, which will arrive in my talk. And now the group, what it is. So the group is, uh, I mean, shortly I will call them 
periodic reductive group. And it's a, F, a group of F point of a connected reductive algebra group that I would denote by uh, bold G, which is defined over F. So let's see some examples. So in the case where uh, bold, bold G is GLN, SLN, or a symplectic or a special orthogonal group, we get what we call a classical group. Uh, sorry, yeah, classical group. SLN is not usually classical, but GLN, SP, SO are called classical groups. And you also have possi uh, possibly exceptional group uh, considering E6, E7, E8, or G2, or F4. And then we have variation of this group up to uh, isogeny. Uh, one interesting thing and very useful in the case of PID groups is that you can uh, play together with the structure of the, the arithmetic of a field and, uh, and also with the geometry of, of a group. More precisely, we, have, we can define a topology uh, by just uh, embedding our group G into a GLM for M sufficient, GLM over F for M sufficiently large. And on this group GLM F, you take just the topology given by uh, topology on the matrices. And on the matrices, you define the topology by the sup on each entries of the periodic norm. And the group are uh, locally profinite, uh, meaning that every neighborhood of the identity contains a, a compact open subgroup. And an example uh, in the case of GLN, general linear group, then you can consider the, the following compact open subgroup. So K0 is GLN, so you take the matrices with coefficient in OF, and this group is a maximal compact subgroup of, uh, of G. And you consider the group KM, when M is uh, greater than zero, defined as the identity, the identity matrix plus the, the PF, uh, so the, the ideal, uh, at the power M times the matrix, the N by N matrices with, with entries in OF. And this gives us a fundamental system of neighborhood of the identity of our group. So this is the structure of a group and we, we, we are interested in representation. So what are representation? Just, uh, I will denote them by pi V. So pi is an, group morphism from G to GLV, where V is a vector space. In general, it is of infinite dimension. And we will be more interested by the representation which are smooth. Smooth means that the stabilizer of any vectors of a representation is an open subgroup. And I will denote by R of G, the category of smooth representation of G. So I say that we are lucky because we can use also the geometry of a group. By this, I mean the fact that the group is the F point of a reductive algebraic group. And especially we have a notion of parabolic subgroup uh, and uh, each parabolic subgroup admits a Levy decomposition. So P, if P is parabolic, you can write it as LU, it's a, a semi dialect decomposition. And L is again a reductive PID group. Uh, and so we can define a functor, which is usually called Arishandra induction or parabolic induction functor from the category of smooth representation of our Levy subgroup to the category of le smooth representation of the original group. And yet the definition, which is due to Arishandra, is very simple. So you take a representation of a Levy and you, trivi you trivially extend extend it to the parabolic. So you consider its inflation to the parabolic and then you induce. Uh, so this factor is very important uh, and you will see it coming uh, in a different way later. Uh, so uh, using this factor, you can define many, we can construct many representation. Uh, in, in general, this induced representation ILPG of sigma is not irreducible. Uh, it is it's not semi-simple, but it has uh, a finite number of irreducible subquotient. And so we this subquotient give, give you many irreducible smooth representation of, of your group G. 
And if you consider all the, Levy, all the proper Levy subgroup of G, you get a lot of, of such irreducible representation. But we do not get all of them. And the one, the, 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 the rest of them, I mean, the one, the representation we do not get are the one which are called supercuspidal. So a smooth representation is called supercuspidal if it is not a subquotient of a proper parabolically induced representation. And uh, that is a nice characterization. You can characterize, characterize it by looking at the matrix coefficient of a representation. And the condition is that they have compact support modulo the center of a group. Um, okay, and you will see that and supercuspidal has if um, we have two basic tools, so the notion of supercuspidol, which are the building block, and then the, the in, in, inducing functor. Uh, as a special case, you will need the following notion, which is the, the case of characters, so representation of dimension one. And uh, you will need characters that are called unramified. And character is unramified if it is trivial on every compact subgroup of a group. And later, because you will be interested in uh, temple, in the temple dual of a group, you will need to consider also a subgroup of a group of anamified character, which is the group of unitary anamified ones. And so I would denote by X of G, the group of anamified character, and by X, U, the, the one which are unitary. unitary. Uh, just. Okay, so until now, it was the construction due to Bernstein and then uh, the idea, due to Arishandra, sorry. And the idea of Bernstein was to consider this anamified character for all the Levy subgroup. And to, instead of looking at the supercuspidal representation just by itself, looking at its orbit under the action of a group of anamified character. So it is what I did not hear by O. So O will be, uh, the tensor product of sigma tensor chi, where sigma is a fixed supercuspidal representation of a Levy subgroup, and uh, chi this runs over all the unramified character of a Levy. And as um, a matter of notation, now we denote by FRAC S uh, the conjugacy class of the orbit of L and O, of the, you know, the pair L O. And in some case, it would be useful to, to uh, fix a base point. In that case, I will write it L sigma in terms of bracket, where sigma is, is a specific point in the orbit. And uh, so let B of G be for Bernstein, the set of that classes S. Then, then the Bernstein decomposition is the following important theorem. It's give a decomposition of a category of, of smooth representation of our group G in, in blocks. Uh, that is in, in indecomposable subcategory, each, each cat is in one category for each element S in B of G. And how is defined that category? It's just, it just defined by you take all the irreducible subquotient of the induced, parabolically induced representation of element in, uh, at, in S, in the orbit O given by S. And this, sub this full subcategory R, S of G are indecomposable and split the full uh, category in a dialect product. And this is, would be very important because uh, instead of trying to, to work uh, to, with all the representation together, you can just fix one S and look at the subcategory which is attached to this S. And these subcategories are a very interest, interesting structure. I will come back uh, on this structure, uh, say more later. Uh, but I will, would like to give you the description of this decomposition in more concrete terms, and because it will be useful for us. And it is as follows. So I just take a representation, smooth representation of G that I denote by pi and pi V. Then for each, element S in B of G, the vector space V has a unique uh, invari G invariant subspace Vs, such that Vs is an object of my subcategory RSG and is maximal, uh, having, is a maximal, is maximal for that property. And moreover, my the, the starting vector space V can be written as the, the, the product or direct sum of the 
vector v of a vector space vs. And if you take now another representation, pi prime v prime, and you compute the homomorph, want to compute the G homomorphism between V and V prime, it's just a product of all the S of the homomorphism between the V S and V prime S. So you really can just look at a given S. And why it is today especially interesting for us is because I will consider a particular representation. And this particular representation, its vector space V is the equalgebra of a group but I denote by H of G. So it is the vector space of locally constant compactly supported function on the group, which is an, uh, equipped with the convolution product. And so this, uh, the group G acts by left translation of function on it. Uh, and uh, this gives a smooth representation of G. And so we can apply the Bernstein decomposition to that representation. And so you, you, this gives you a decomposition of a vector space HV, H, H of G, uh, into a subspace HGS. And moreover, in this case, the, the vector space H, HGS, in the case of HG, are a two sided ideal of the algebra. And this is what you will use uh, in one minute. Uh, as follows. So we need to consider what is called the reduced sister algebra of a group. And uh, so it, I just briefly recall the definition. So you consider a, we fixed a left invariant R measure on the group and you form the inverse space uh, L2 of G. And then the left regular representation of L1 of G given by the, the convolution uh, give you a representation and you can consider the sister algebra, which is generated by the image of this uh, left regular representation lambda. So this, uh, uh, this sister algebra is especially interesting because its spectrum may be identified to the temper dual of a group. So what is temper dual? Uh, it's the set of equivalence classes of tempered irreducible representation of smooth representation of, of a group G. And so because of the decomposition that I have given, that I have just given here for the, the Recu algebra H, we can obtain uh, similarly a decomposition of the reduced sister algebra. Uh, so we can write the sister, reduced sister algebra of G as a dialect sum over all the S in B of G of uh, sub, sub representation uh, C, CR star GS, where we define CR star GS as the closure of the ideal H of GS in the C star algebra. Uh, and uh, if you want to understand the spectrum of this, uh, of each of this uh, uh, algebra, uh, the spectrum, the spectrum of, of this algebra is ident can be identified with the intersection of a temper dual of G, of G with the a set of irreducible um, with a category of Bernstein uh, attached to to S. So the uh, we just need the irreducible object of it that I will denote by ir S of G set of irreducible object of a subcategory R S G. So this gives a decomposition of the sister algebra. And we can say, uh, okay, this is what, one thing. So this is uh, easy to, to define. And now uh, we would like to uh, do something more. And I mean, you, to, you would like to understand, to have a description of a K theory of this, uh, of this summand. And for this, we introduce the following group. You consider the, the so we still have a, so we have S. So I recall that S is the G conjugacy class of a pair formed by a Levy subgroup and an orbit of, of sigma supercuspidal of a group by RMFI character. So I can consider the element in in the normalizer of L, which fixed the we fix S 
that is which fix which fix the orbit that is which fix up to twisting by some unramified character. And then I modeled by L. Uh, and this is a certain final group. And yeah, it has a nice structure. It is uh, what, uh, what is called an extended uh, finite coxeter group, meaning it is the, the semi dialect product of a, of a finite coxeter group, which it, in fact is a finite vial group, by some finite abelian group. Uh, for instance, for GLN, it is always a, fi a finite vial group. But if you go to SLN, we have a non trivial, in general, a non trivial part. Uh, uh, I mean, this small abelian group is not is not one in general. Uh, and we so we have a kind of vi group, extended vi group, and we also have a torus, uh, a compact torus. And how you define it? You just consider the orbit of sigma uh, by the group of unitary anamified character of our Levy. Yeah, so it is the, what I call TSU. It's a compact torus uh, of G. Uh, so we have, and when we have this, you can consider, uh, and, and sorry, and the group WS is act, of course, on TUS, on the torus. So we can consider the, the, the usual topological equivalent K theory for the, for the action of the final group WS acting on that compact torus. So it's what I denote by uh, KJ. Uh, WS of TSU. And the conjecture that we made with uh, Paul Baum and Roger Plyman uh, more than 20 year, 10 years ago is that this uh, equivalent K, K theory is isomorphic with the K theory of the part of a C star, redu of, a, of a reduced C star algebra of G, which is attached to S. Uh, and this conjecture was in the case where the group is split. So, some remark. Uh, so we prove it uh, with uh, Solovet in the case of, uh, um, in, the, in the particular case, the case where the representations, uh, where the Levy is a torus and the representation, representation sigma as uh, a fixed point by an Iwori subgroup. Uh, but we prove it only up to torsion. And uh, later, uh, uh, Martin Solovald proved it, in, uh, proved it for in the case of a fine algebra. And so in the case where uh, this, this part of, uh, of uh, the, the big Heike algebra is Morita equivalent to an a fine algebra, then the conjecture is true. So it is in particular the case when G is a classical group or an exceptional group of type G2. Uh, but it's not the case, as I already said, when in, for in, in general for SLN. But this is this conjecture as stated here was for in, is for in the case where the group is F split. But we have paired many PID groups which are not F split. For instance, unitary groups. And for this group, we need or in a form of GLN or SLN. For this group, we needed a new version of a conjecture. So. And how, what is the, the, the new version? But just adding a two cycle, a twist by a two cycle, a two cycle. And here is the formulation of, a, I mean, the, the, the general form of a conjecture for an arbitrary PID group. So it's almost the same. So in particular on the right, I mean, the C star algebra this does not change. But on the left, we will replace. The, the previous uh, version by the following. So we assume that for each S there exists a two cycle on the group on the product of WS cross WS with value in C star. And such that uh, we, we can, the twisted version of uh, the equivalent K theory of the tolerance by the group WS is isomorphic to the K theory of a sister, uh, the, the, the ideal of a sister algebra. And how we define this twisted version of a K theory, uh, you, you, we, we define it using a minimal, so we consider a minimal item potent in the group algebra of the body US. Uh, and uh, 
such that the um, twisted group algebra of WS by our cycle is isomorphic with the, the, the image by this minimal idempotent of a group algebra of a central, a certain central extension of a group. It's, and uh, I denote this central extension by uh, WS tilde. Uh, so this is the definition and you can uh, rephrase it, uh, check that it is isomorphic to the K theory of a cross product algebra, which is the cross product of the uh, algebra C0 C of a C0 TSU. I recall that TSU is a compact torus and C0 is the usual notation for function which are zero at infinity. And you consider the cross product with a group algebra, a twisted group algebra of WS. So this is something very general that, that will occur in the, in, the, in, in the cycle of my talk and which is the general picture. But when the group is non-split or maybe non -quasi, at least non-quasi-split, you need to replace the group WS by a twisted version of it by a certain co-cycle. Uh, and recently, uh, Martin Solovet proved uh, the validity of our conjecture up to torsion. Uh, so it's what I said here. So we just take this, the, the conjecture, but you, you allow to twist to tensor by the complex number on both sides. So in that case, it is proved uh, that uh, the torsion, uh, the, the general form uh, with torsion is not yet uh, uh, established. And again, in the case where we have uh, really a fine Heiko algebra, the same method should, uh, sh should give us, uh, should prove a conjecture, but the, the case of twisted a fine Heiko algebra is more subtle and it's not yet done. Uh, okay. So this is the conjecture and the situation. So now, what is the link with Baumkorn? I promise to say something about Baumkorn. Uh, okay, so Baumkorn in the case of Piadic reductive group. Uh, so it has the following form. So on the left, uh, the usual classifying space is, is uh, given, the role of the classifying space is given by uh, the um, Bruatitz or affine building of a periodic group G. So we, and the, the Baumkorn conjecture, which was proved in, in a more general situation by uh, Vincent Laforgue, is, is that the, the, the canonical assembly map from the, uh, the, uh, the K homology of the Bruatitz building, uh, we value in the K theory of a C-star algebra of G is an isomorphism. So it's an int very important and interesting uh, result and conjecture because the, the two objects are, are, are of very different nature. So on the right, you have a K theory of a C-star algebra, which is kind of analytic object. And on the left, uh, something which is more uh, 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 geometric or related to operator algebra or homotopy. And, uh, I will not explain what is the assembly map because I, I mean, it will be too long and I will, do not need it, but it's it's a map which is related to the index, to index theory. Uh, one thing which is which I, 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 I find interesting is in the case of real group, uh, what people were interested in was to understand the K theory of a sister algebra. And the, the left the left arm side was uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, which I mean was something very well understood. For Piadi group, it's just the opposite. The the left hand side is absolutely not clear. I mean, he has a definition, but it's not clear how to deal with it. Uh, and on the on the right, we say we know a bit more because we have this best in decomposition and this and our conjecture. Uh, so we can view uh, our conjecture as what I wrote as a consequence as the, an existence of a, bi, a consequence of Baumkorn and or, is that our conjecture asserts the existence of a bijection between the, the K homology of a building and this sum, direct sum of this uh, K, uh, K invariant uh, twisted, uh, twisted version of K invariant uh, uh, of a 
WS invariant K theory of, of, of the torus. Um, okay, and I think it will be very interesting to, to, to understand better the, this map. And for that, a, a way to do it will be to use the inverse, the inverse map of the assembly map, which is not so well known and studied. There are some, some results in that direction, but not as, as, as far as I know. Uh, so now, uh, here we are, uh, I say that it is the ABPS k Fioli conjecture. Actually, it's, it's a facet of our conjecture, and now I will explain briefly what is the conjecture in uh, at the level of not only tempered, but uh, uh, any uh, uh, smooth irreducible representation. And for this, I need the notion of uh, extended quotient or more generally twisted extended quotient, but it's very easy to, to, to define. So you start with a finite group gamma. So you can think of a group WS that we have before, but soon you will have another group. And we can for each, uh, so a finite group acting on a topological space X. And we can consider the isotropic group of each point of X that I denote by gamma X. And uh, we assume that we have a collection of co-cycle uh, from gamma x cross gamma x with value in C star, uh, which have nice property of nice compatibility property. Meaning if you look at the co-cycle attached to the image of x by an, a, an element gamma of a group, and if you consider the, uh, the image of, a, of, a, of a, the co-cycle defined by the action of the conjugation by gamma, these two co-cycles define the same class, uh, the same cohomological class. Uh, and then we can we define the following uh, space. Uh, we consider pairs of elements. One element is an element of a space, X, and the second element is an, 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 an simple modules, simple module of the uh, twisted group algebra of gamma X of the isotropic group. And you can make, make a top, put a topology on this uh, space by declaring that a subspace is open if its projection on the first co coordinate is open in X. So this is a certain space. And if you forget about the co-cycle, if you look at the case where the co-cycle is trivial, you, you are just have pairs of element X tau and where tau is an, irreducible representation of, of gamma X. And if you, of course, gamma X is a finite group and you have a, uh, of course you have a basis of gamma X which is given by the irreducible characters. And it is what we are taking here. But we also have an, a nice basis given by the characteristic function of conjugacy class. And if you replace this by conjugacy, characteristic function of conjugacy class, in the case of a cycle is trivial, you will just recover the, uh, what is called the uh, Drinfel double. I mean, so, I mean, not here, sorry, but when you, you consider this and then the action, sorry, of, of uh, the quotient of that space by the action of gamma, of gamma, you will, you will get a space, which is usually, uh, which is an, as the same, uh, is kind of generalization of a, a Drinfel double space. Uh, so we put some condition of compatibility uh, when you you we, when you have uh, the group algebra twisted group algebra of gamma x and the one of uh, gamma of, of gamma sub gamma x with action with some element gamma uh, and then you redefine the the twisted extended quotient just as a quotient of this space gamma tilde x by the action of the natural action of gamma. Uh, so this is a notion of extend, twisted extended quotient. And with this, we can formulate uh, the general form of our conjecture, uh, which is that for any S, there exists a collection of two co-cycles. Uh, so here, uh, the role of X is played by the tallest TS, not the compact tallest, but the tallest itself. Uh, so, and uh, which is the orbit of a, uh, a supercuspidal sigma by the action of the, the group of unramified character of a Levy. 
And we, we claim that there exists a, co a, co a collection of, of two, two co cycle and a, the, and a bijection with good property that I will not have time to explain precisely what they, what they are, uh, between the, uh, the, the IRS of G, which is the set of irreducible object of my category RS of G, Bernstein category, and the extended quotient, twisted extended quotient for the trollers TS by the action of WS. And one of the property which will be very important today is that you can restrict this to the temperature, so intersect the, the left hand side by the temperature. And in that case on the right, what we, ex we conjecture we get would be the twisted extended quotient of a compact torus by the same group, WS. Uh, so the first, uh, the seed for this conjecture occur in the case of GLN uh, in, the, in two papers by Brodsky and Plyman. Then in two, uh, 2015, my student, uh, Amen Musawi, proved it for uh, split classical groups. Uh, and uh, when F has characteristic zero, and then we prove it in the case of principal series of split PID group. In all these cases, there is no co-cycle needed. So a co-cycle can be taken to be tri trivial. But then we look at the case of inner form of GLA. It was also trivial co-cycle. But for when you arrive at an inner, uh, certain inner form of SL5 of F, we realize that we need in general a co-cycle. Uh, and then this, this conjecture was proven by Sullivan uh, last year. And um, moreover, in, in several cases, the co-cycle can be taken to be, uh, to be trivial for, for, uh, for so we, which we show this in the case of split, principal series of split PID group. Uh, in a joint work with uh, with Su Wei in, uh, for G2 and for pure inner form of split classical groups with uh, Musawi and Solovel. Uh, okay, so this uh, is the end of the first part of my talk on the group side. And uh, the second part is, I can say that the second part is, I, I can stop here and say the second part is exactly the same, but on Galois side. You just pick every, every element here, you write the, the analogous uh, uh, object on the Galois side, and we have the same thing, but here you replace conjecture by, by theorem because it's, it was possible to prove it uh, uh, with no assumption directly. Okay, but I still will explain what it is. <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, uh, first going to the Galois side. Uh, so I will consider a group attached to the periodic field F, uh, to a local non-Archimedean field F. Uh, this is the Vey group and it's a dense subgroup of a absolute Galois group of F. And which will be very important. We need to consider a complex reductive group, uh, G check, which has group uh, root datum dual to that of G. For instance, GLN F, it's uh, for GLN F, G check is, is GLN over C. But if G is SLN, then uh, G check will be PGLN over, over C. You will exchange the, the root. If a group is, you start with uh, SP2N, you will, over F, you will get for G check, SO2N plus one over, over C. Uh, and then a long last parameter of for short L parameter, it's a, a continuous morphism from the product, uh, direct product of WF by SL2C. We value in this group uh, G check. And to simplify, to have this simplified, simplified form, I assume that my group G is a split group or more generally an inner form of a split group. So for instance, this form, if you want to do a unitary group, you, you it's, it's slightly more involved. But the, the, I mean, the, the philosophy is the same. It's just the no, definition, which are a bit more, more subtle. Uh, and the condition is that, so you have a morphism. Of course, you can consider its restriction to SL2C. So you have a morphism from SL2C to a 
reductive complex group, and the condition is that it is a morphism of algebraic groups. And if you now we look at the restriction to WF, you require that the image of any element of WF by, by a parameter phi is a semi-simple element of G check. So in some sense, the, the, the restriction to WF gives you the semi-simple part of a parameter and the restriction to SL2C using jacobson morozov theorem give you the unipotent part. What you do, just need to know is the image by phi of a unipotent, of a standard unipotent element in SL2. So the unipotent 1101. Uh, so, uh, and then I will denote by phi of G this, and the group G check acts naturally on the, on the L parameter and I will denote by phi of G the set of G check conjugacy classes. So what is local long length correspondence? First, the crude form of it predicts, predicts, sorry, a surjective map, the existence of a surjective map with finite fibers and the fibers are called L packet with a, lot, a list of good property that again, I will not give, uh, which goes from the smooth dual of G to the set of conjugacy classes of, of, par, L, par, of uh, L parameter. Uh, but of course, this map is just uh, subjective. So in the case of GLN, it is a bijection, but in general, it's only subjective. And we, and it's uh, uh, necessary to understand in, uh, the fibers. So the internal structure of the L packet and the way to do this is, to, is by using the notion of enhance L parameter. So you will enhance the parameter phi by what? By a certain representation rho of a certain finite group. And this finite group is very easy to see what it is. You just consider the simply connected cover of a derived group of G check. And then you consider the centralizer of the image by the parameter, the centralizer in this simply connected cover of the image of a parameter, all the image. And this group is, reductive complex group, but not necessarily connected. So you will consider its component group. Uh, so the, the quotient of a, of a group by uh, its identity component. And this gives you a finite group, small one, and uh, you will consider the irreducible representation of that group. And the group G check acts naturally on the pairs of, of elements formed by a parameter and an enhancement of it. And then here is the, the refined form of local long length correspondence. Now it's a bijection. It predicts a bijection between uh, the smooth dual and the set of G check conjugacy classes of n enhanced L parameter. So uh, now you remind that on the on the, le the left hand side, I have we have a Bernstein decomposition. So if you think at the Bernstein decomposition, which is a decomposition of a category of smooth representation of G, if you uh, look at the, what, are the, it's, uh, what, is, what is given for the irreducible representation, it's given partition of a smooth dual in terms of series. Each series is uh, attached, being attached to a certain S. And so if you believe in a long length correspondence, you say, okay, you can, apply long length correspondence on each uh, subset and you will get a corresponding subset on the Galois side. But long length correspondence is, is known for GLN, uh, thanks to the work of Alice, independently proved by Alice Taylor, by Enyar and by Scholze. It's also proved when F has characteristic zero for classical group by uh, Arthur, but in general it's not known. Uh, and uh, so, uh, we cannot have a, a, a general definition like this. So it was, the idea was to look at the set of enhanced L parameter and try to mimic the, the idea of Bernstein, but on the dual side. Uh, and to do this, we, uh, so it's what you will do now, just a remark, uh, uh, we will introduce, uh, which is very useful in the computation. Uh, you can consider this group that I like to denote by curly phi, G, curly G sub phi, which is the inverse in the uh, 
uh, the, um, in G, GS, GSC check of a centralizer in GR check of image, but here is the image, not of all the, of the product of WF by SL2C, but just the image of, uh, the image of only WF. And if you consider the image by the parameter of a unipotent element of SL2C, you get a unipotent element in the identity component of that group. Again, this group is, uh, this group curly G phi is not necessarily uh, connected. And you can consider its group of component and uh, you can check that the group S phi is canonically isomorphic with the group of component of it of the element U phi in G phi. And this is very useful because now in G phi, you have an, an uh, in not necessarily connected, but a reductive complex group. And you can use method like Springer correspondence or generalized Springer correspondence uh, to, to, to work on it. Uh, the first step uh, in trying to mimic Bernstein decomposition is first to go back to Arishandra and to say what uh, to uh, it's, and it's to try to adapt the philosophy of cuspidal forms of, of Arishandra. In some sense to say, okay, do we have a philosophy of cuspidal forms at the, uh, on the Galois side? And for that first thing is, was to define the notion of cuspidal. So what is a cuspidality for n enhanced L parameter? And, um, Cuspidality cannot be defined only at the level of a parameter because there exists, uh, starting from SP4 or G2, there is this packet that we like to call mixed packet in, in which we have at the same time super cuspidal and non super cuspidal. So the notion of, so the notion of cuspidality on the Galois side is something which depends not only on the parameter, but also on, the, on its, on the enhancement. So the definition is the following. So we want something on the parameter. We want that the parameter is discrete. That is, its image is not contained in any proper Levy subgroup. And regarding the, the enhancement, we go to this group G, curly G phi, and we require that the pair given by a unipotent element, the unipotent element U phi and rho is cuspidal. Uh, which is a terminology introduced by Lustig in his work on uh, generalized Springer correspondence. And actually it's possible to define to, 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 to define it uh, using also an induction, parabolic induction, but uh, here it's a parabolic induction uh, on the, the category, uh, the life category, and you just consider certain per G phi equivalent perverse shifts on the unipotent variety of the group curly G phi. Uh, so we have a notion of cuspidality and uh, we also have the following result, which was the motivation for to, to, to have this, for, to introduce this notion, the first motivation is that the, the local long lens correspondence in the case where it is known, what it has been established is defines a bijection between the set of cuspid, super cuspidal representation of a group and the set of cuspidal enhanced parameter. So this is uh, true for inner form of GLN and SLN for G2 and also when G is a pure inner form of a split classical group. And we, uh, and we conjecture that it is always true. Uh, so we have a cuspidality, but now, uh, we want to do more, so we want to have dancing decomposition. Uh, and it is what we do here. Uh, so uh, we start with a Levy subgroup of G and uh, a cuspidal and hence parameter for that Levy subgroup. Cuspidal and hence parameter plays the role of super cuspidal. And we define S check as the same thing, the G check conjugacy classes class of the orbit of our cuspidal parameter under the action of a certain group, which is uh, naturally isomorphic to the group of anamified character of L. Uh, this group I denoted by X and R of L, 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 the double L is for the L group of L, and L is a Levy. And then with this uh, definition, we, 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 we can prove that the set of enhanced L parameter of G is admits a partition as 
sub, by subset, uh, which are uh, at indexed by this element S check. And uh, the definition of, 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 of each uh, subset is, uh, the, is the fiber of a cuspid. So for each, we, we also have a map, which we call cuspidal support map. We send an arbitrary enhanced parameter for G to a cuspidal, or more precisely, a conjugacy class of a cuspidal L parameter for enhanced L parameter for the levy. And, Similarly, have the infinitesim so on the group side, we have the infinitesimal character defined by I on R, and we have a version, an analog of this on the, on the Galois side. And we take the fiber of this infinitesimal character map, and it is the, it gives us the block we want. Uh, and then using, having this, we can prove the analog of uh, the ABPS conjecture on the Galois side, and as I promised to you, it's exactly the same version as before. You just replace the S by the S check. And, and you write exactly everything the same. Everywhere where we have a group, you, you replace the group G by G check, L the Levy by L check. And uh, so in particular, you have the group WS check which is the set of element, the, uh, the group defined by the, the element in the normalizer of L check mod L check, which send an element, an enhanced uh, parameter lambda of, uh, on the levy uh, to a parameter, to the same parameter twisted by some unramified uh, character of, of our group. And again, uh, uh, but here we can prove that we can construct a collection of two cycle and with this collection of two cycle we have a by we can prove that we have a nice bijection between this so the phi fa, phi s e of g is the the things which occurs here so this this uh, uh, this subset of uh, of our partition. And we have a description of bijection between this subset and the corresponding twisted extended quotient with respect to this group. And again, uh, TS check is just the orbit of uh, our, the, the enhanced parameter. So you replace the representation on the previous definition by lambda, which is a short, shortened notation for uh, phi, phi comma uh, rho. And you have a tor this is a complex torus. We have an action of WS check on it, and you can form the twisted extended cushion for this uh, two cycle. And the, the, the theorem is that we get the bijection. And moreover, if we restrict to bounded L and param ons parameter, meaning the, the, the parameter is bounded, you get a bijection, which is the parameter which are expected to correspond to tempered representation you get a bijection with a tempered part of the extended quotient. Okay. So this is the Galois version of ABPS. And uh, in fact, what I, I didn't mention, maybe I mentioned, but I didn't insist on it. Uh, in the proof, which were uh, the, the, the previous case, where we, the first cases where we proved uh, ABPS conjecture on the group side, we use uh, the fact that we have long loss correspondence. But here, we do not need to have long loss correspondence to prove this result. It's totally on the Galois side. But of course, we have a result on the Galois side. We have a result on the group side. We would like to match them. And this is the last part of the talk. So just a very uh, short summary. So we have Piatti group, we have S, which is a Benson uh, uh, pair, and we have uh, its analog on the Galois side, and we have bijection on the first bijection is on the group side, and the second is on the Galois side. And in the middle, we have two extended quotient, twisted extended quotient. So we expect that they are isomorphic. Uh, but to say that, it, we need to make sense because you need to relate S to S check. And so this is what uh, way to do it. 
So we make the following uh, assumption or hypothesis. We assume that for S, for any S, there exists a map LS, which goes from the, the part of, so here S of L, which is just the orbit of S by, because by uh, twisting the orbit of a supercuspidal of a supercuspidal sigma by the unramified character of L to the set of enhanced cuspidal L parameter of L. And we require that this map is functor satisfy the following, following functoriality property. So here is the property. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, here's the property. And uh, he has, it, it just, uh, so he has three, uh, three uh, item, items. First, if you twist by some anamified character, uh, then you, the twisting is preserved on the other side. Uh, so this is the first property. So I recall that we have an isomorphism between the, the, twi the, the character, anamified character we twist with on the group side and same on the other side, and we did not fit this isomorphism by chi, chi check. Uh, so we come this compatibility, we, quite, we have an action of, the, of the, the normalizer of the Levy, Monmer Levy, and also a canonical isomorphism. We prove it uh, with a Baum uh, prime and level before. And we, again, I denote by W sign to W check for this isomorphism, and we require that the, the, the action of this uh, of W check on the parameter correspond to the parameter of a, represent of a representation twisted by an, the corresponding element in WL. And again, we require that the two co-cycles are compatible by, uh, so we just note that, that, the, that TS uh, we can write it as a quotient of a group of anamified character, uh, a certain quotient, and so we. So it makes sense to to talk about uh, to to write the element of T S uh, of this quotient. Uh, so you, you make sense to consider the cocycle chi S. Sorry, natural S sub chi, and we want that we require that the cocycle match. Then we when we have this property, then Uh, we, it's, so if we have this property, we can check that we have a bijection between the two extended quotient. I mean, the property is is, is stated in a way that it's give us uh, a canonical bijection. And then you just rewrite both sides. So the group side, which is an union of ESG and Galois side, which is in, uh, an union of this uh, new set. And so we get a bijection uh, between the E of G and, and the set of contiguity classes of enhanced parameter and same thing for the for two. Oh, there is something wrong. Uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the right here, it of course it's not phi, it's phi bounded because, we, for, because when you take the tempered, you just want the, the, the bounded parameter. Uh, okay, and uh, yeah, uh, so we get the bijection. So now we can say, okay, we have long lens correspondent in general, assuming the, 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 the hypothesis. Uh, but in general, we don't know because we just get the bijection. And to, 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 to be sure that it is, the, it is long lens correspondent, you need to check that it satisfies the property of long lens correspondence. So this is not done in general. But in the case where G is a pure inner form of a split classical group, uh, in that case, uh, first in, we prove that the cocycle are trivial in this case. And also in that case, when, the, when F is a periodic field, so at characteristic zero, we have long lens correspondence, which was defined by Arthur. So what we did is that we check that uh, with uh, Musawi and Solvet that our construction coincide with Arthur construction. So for classical, for inner form of pure inner form of class, split classical groups, we know that this bijection gives the long lens correspondence. So it gave us confidence that it should be the case in general. Uh, 
case, but last thing, uh, how to relate this with bound cone. And uh, so in the same way as, uh, uh, as before, we can consider this the following. So I assume that the hypothesis is satisfied and also the, the ABPS k theory conjecture. Then if we, are, which is true, and so when G is G2 or uh, G is a pure inner form of a classical group, then we go, we have the, bump, the, the assembly map. So we have bound con conject, uh, conjecture, which is known. So we go from the, the K homology, equivalent homology of a, of a Bruatis building of a group to the K theory of a C star, radius C star algebra of G. So this is bound con. Then, uh, I mean, in the middle is, is the usual, I mean, the fact that uh, we've, uh, the, the spectrum of a radius C star gives us the tempered dual of G. And from that, using the ABPS K theory conjecture, uh, no, sorry. And then from using first the, what I just say with, with the hypothesis, we replace here T of G and, and very, again, there is the same typo here should be, should be bounded. And then uh, at the last version, we define this as, okay, very, very, uh, I, I forgot the bounded in the last part, sorry. Uh, uh, here it should be bounded uh, and hence L parameter. And in the definition, it should be the sum of S in B check of, of B check of V. But here I only consider the compact torus, the one which was arriving here. Uh, yeah, like here. Yeah. I, it should be this, yeah, this, this, this set, bounded parameter. So I, 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 I will modify this on, on my slides. So this give a way to pass from the K homology of a of the Iwori, of sorry Iwori, of the Bruatis building to the uh, a certain sum over all the Bernstein component on the Galois side of of equivalent K theory of compact torus. Uh, Uh, but this, so it's give, give us, it will give us a map. And of course, it will be uh, very interesting to have a direct map going from the left to, to, the, to, the, to the, the extreme right. But this is uh, not done yet. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie, for a very beautiful fire hose of information and talk, which uh, just is an overview of a course in one lecture. You've organized it beautifully, and I'm sure it's going to lead to a great deal of discussion. Thank so you. why don't we stop sharing screen and see if we have comments from the audience. Please turn on your video if you want to talk so we can see who is talking to each other. So you have a big program to fill in that last slide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there no comments? It, it was a, a bit overwhelming. Jen. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's too much for me. And um, I have a quick question uh, also from the Bernstein decomposition. So it, it is a coarse decomposition. So just decompose as a disjoint union of some size. Or yes. some varieties. And I think there's also a theory that uh, it can be decomposed as a subset of Euclidean space. So, sorry, subspace decomposed as? Of Euclidean space, just as what we have for the real Lie group. 
So yeah. we can just have some homomorphism from the unitary door of the PID group to a subset of Euclidean subspace, which is a different union of different dif dimensional manifolds. So this, the singular, uh, single point is the discrete series, and we, we have also some one dis <coughs> dimensional or two dimensional subspace. Of the Ukrainian space, I think. Um, uh, I think Harris China proved this for really groups. Yes. And uh, this has already been proved for PID groups. So this is another decomposition of the um, uh, uh, temper door. I think uh, the support of the planetary mirror. So and and that my question. Uh, so uh, maybe I. Uh, um, statement is not so clear. So uh, is, is that uh, there's any coincidence between the um, Bernstein decomposition uh, and I mean um, the decomposition of the temporal door uh, into the subspace, some unfunded subspace of uh, Euclidean, sub Euclidean space. Okay, I, I do not know the, the, the answer to the question. And uh, so, you, if, you, you, uh, yes. if you just consider the group SL2 over the real field, it's just uh, the temporal door, it's just some of a count of family of single points and possibly two or one real line for the principal. Yeah, so we all agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can I see uh, I think there's some analog for this result to PID groups, some subspace subset of Euclidean subspace. Yeah, but who has written something for PID? Do you have a reference for that? Uh I think uh, I think uh, I also the, the Professor Finis ah, set yeah. this result. Yeah, yeah, always set this result. Okay, I do not know this. So, okay, I, I, I'm not sure if it's it is for okay. The there is a difference between real and periodic. Is that for for real? So for periodic, we have two two possible notions to be considered. It's a super cuspidal representation and make the decomposition using super cuspidal like Bernstein did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, can yeah, consider yeah. square integrable representation, which is more maybe more adapted to to temper dual. And which is what it is involved in uh, uh, a <coughs> formula, for instance. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah. so I think it, it, so which means that it, it means to decompose further the, the part uh, attached to uh, one S into, uh, into more pieces. And it's uh, so, it's, so it's what I did with uh, Alexander, uh, Alexander Avgustidis in some cases. To try to have a decomposition of, of this, but the relation with uh, Finis, I didn't know. I mean, but uh, something certainly interesting to to look at. Yeah, uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, just as the parabolic introduction induction, if we take the Levy subgroup to, or the par parabolic subgroup to be the group itself, it's just a supercuspidal representation. Yeah, it's just a supercuspidal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that is a discrete site or just a one. Zero dimension, yes. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my questions. So thank you. Are there any other comments? Well, I think, Anwar, you've given us a great deal of food for thought, and there's a tremendous amount of work still to be done. So we're looking forward to hearing about how it works out. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. It was very interesting to, to come. Yeah, very happy to, to be here. So bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>